Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to the lectures in chemistry on the atomic structure and chemical bonding. My name is Mangala Sundar and I am in the Department of Chemistry, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. And my email coordinates are given here for you to communicate course related inquiries and things like that. Okay. Now, this is a continuation of the last lecture on the introduction to angular momentum. And in this lecture, let us look at the properties of the spin half system angular momentum. The electron spin is the most famous example. Proton spin, the nucleus proton, also has a spin angular momentum given by the angular momentum magnitude one half. So, this is the uh, purely quantum mechanical spin property that we were st studying. Now, in the last lecture, I think I left with the question the on the commutation of the component commutation relations basically relations of the components relations between the components. I think we were looking at angular momenta with the following notation yes as the spin angular momentum and in the coordinate representation given by three components S x, S y and S z. The orbital angular momentum also given by the three coordinates with the corresponding symbols and the total angular momentum which is the sum of L plus S. L and S, the sum of L and S is J x of x plus the corresponding components in the other directions. Okay. Now, the question that we want to address and also pursue further is the fact that the components S x, S y, the commutator between them is given by this relation i h bar s z and likewise the commutator of s y and s z is given by i h bar s x and s z s x commutator is i h bar s y. Okay. These are dimensioned angular momenta. The dimension is there in the h bar that you use. Therefore, for the logical uh, development of some of the algebraic properties of them, let us define a an angular momentum without the dimension namely i as s by h bar or l by h bar or j by h bar whichever that we want to deal with. Okay we are going to deal with the spin angular momentum and let us define i in such a way that if i is defined without the h bar then it is immediate that the commutator i x i y is i i z i y i z commutator is i i x and i z i x commutator is i i y. We shall use this as the use these as the starting point for all the algebraic properties that we study in this lecture. Okay. No h bar here. It is important to note that i square, which is given as the sum of the squares of the components i x and i y and i z, i square commutes with all the three components. I square comma I x commutator is 0, 
i square comma i y commutator is 0 and i square i z commutator is also 0. Okay. Therefore, because these are operators angular momentum operators and because they commute it is possible to have simultaneous eigenfunction for the pairs, but only one of the pairs i square i x or i square i y or i square i z. By convention we normally choose the pair of operators for which the eigenfunctions are defined simultaneously as i square and i z. The spin a half angular momentum corresponds to the following property. I square acting on this function spin a half angular momentum corresponds to two possible eigenvalues for the I z operator. Okay. I z acting on psi 1 gives you half psi 1 and I z acting on the other eigenfunction psi 2 gives you minus a half psi 2. So, these are the two uh, discrete values for the z component of the spin a half angular momentum and I think we discussed this in the Stern Gerlach experiment that was done in the last class, last lecture. What about I square? I square on psi 1 and 2 whichever it is okay, gives you the same result namely I into I plus 1 and I in this case is 1 half therefore, it gives you 3 by 4 on psi 1 or 2 it is the same value. Okay. So, we have a wave function psi 1 2 psi which is defined by the same eigenvalue of i into i plus 1 for the operator i square, but with different eigenvalues half and minus a half for the i z operator. The usual convention is to write psi 1 with these eigenvalues as the descriptors namely the half for the i z square sorry i square the half for the operator i square where i into i plus 1 this one. So, this is half and then the other half is the eigenvalue of the i z operator. So, psi 2 will be 1 half and minus 1 half and the convention in textbooks and in the uh, literature physics literature and also in the chemistry in the NMR and all these uh, subjects the convention is to write this as alpha and beta states spin a half states. These are spin a half eigenfunctions with the specific properties as I have given here i square on alpha or i square on beta gives you 3 by 4 alpha or beta i z on alpha gives you half alpha and i z on beta gives you minus a half beta. Okay. Now, while this is clear what about the action of i x on alpha i x on beta i y on alpha i y on beta because these are the other two spin angular momentum components and even though they are not simultaneously eigen uh, I mean alpha and beta are not simultaneously eigen functions of i x and i y we must know what happens when i x operates on alpha or i x operates on beta and likewise i y on alpha or beta. To calculate this there is a very standard method namely to first look at the commutator first define a pair of operators called i plus spin angular momentum raising operators we will see why it is angular momentum raising operator and the other one i minus as i x minus i i y as the lowering operator. We will see in a few minutes why these names raising and lowering come in. To calculate the effect of i x on alpha let us start with the commutator i z comma i plus. 
and then act on the state alpha. But first let us look at the commutator and that is easy to write down because it is i z comma i x plus i i y and the commutator of z with x gives you i y it gives you i i y and the commutator of z with i y gives you with y gives you minus i x and therefore with uh, plus i into minus i i x the answer is i x plus i i y is equal to i plus okay therefore the action of i z i plus minus i plus i z on the state alpha is the same as the action of i plus on alpha and you can write this down immediately as i z acting on the state obtained by the action of i plus on alpha minus i plus on the state obtained by i z on acting on alpha and that is of course 1 by 2 alpha so this 1 by 2 and that is equal to i plus on alpha. Okay. Therefore, i z acting on this state is equal to 3 by 2 acting on the same state. What is the state? The state is the state obtained by the action of i plus on alpha. Therefore, i z has an eigenfunction psi which is this which has an eigenvalue 3 by 2 on psi that is not possible because we have started with the requirement with the with the properties that i plus i z has only two eigenvalues plus and minus half plus a half and minus a half. Therefore, the state i z acting on that state giving you 3 by 2 the state is not a possible state for the operator i z which means i plus on alpha has to be 0 it does not exist. Okay. So, this is property 1. What about the same thing i plus on beta? You can do the same commutator namely i z i plus acting on beta minus i plus i z acting on beta is the same as the i plus on beta and you can see immediately that this gives you a minus a half and therefore, you will get i z on this state i plus on beta plus 1 by 2 i plus on beta because this i z on beta has already given you 1 by 2 times beta for what is left over is this and i plus on beta on the right hand side which tells you that the two together gives you i z acting on a state gives the result of one half on that state. What is the state? The state is a plus operator acting on beta. Now, remember the eigenfunction of i z with the eigenvalue half is alpha. Therefore, i plus on beta is equal to this or it is proportional to this linear algebraic uh, calculation tell us that the action of i plus on beta is alpha. The action of i plus on alpha is 0. So, if you think of alpha and beta are two states you call this as alpha and you call this as beta then you see i plus acting on the state takes it up and i plus acting on the state takes it to 0 no no further states. Okay. This is the action of the raising and lowering raising operator on the alpha and beta the action of the lowering operator by exactly the same argument is obtained by calculating the commutator i minus on i z and I will leave it to you to verify that this is the same as i minus and therefore, you will get the relations i minus on beta is 
0 i minus on alpha is equal to beta. Okay. So, you have that. Now, also remember that alpha and beta are two eigenstates of the i z operator with the different eigenvalues. Therefore, the states are orthogonal to each other alpha on beta is equal to 0. The states are normalizable and therefore, we will use only those normalized states namely alpha alpha is 1 and that is equal to beta beta. Okay. So, this is the orthogonality property of the eigenfunctions of the i z operator and the states are such that the action of i plus and minus operators on alpha or beta or what you have already seen. Now, therefore, what is i x on alpha? i x on alpha is i plus plus i minus by 2. Remember i x plus or minus i y is i plus or minus. Therefore, if you add these two the i you get this i plus plus i minus is equal to 1 by 2 and therefore, the action of the state uh, on the state alpha by i x is the same as that. And you know i plus on alpha is 0 and i minus on alpha gives you beta therefore, the answer is 1 by 2 beta. Okay. And i x in a similar way acting on beta gives you 1 by 2 i plus plus i minus on beta and i minus on beta is 0 i plus on beta gives you alpha therefore, it gives you 1 by 2 alpha. Okay. So, the action of i x on both the states are known therefore, the algebraic details are becoming more and more complete. The only other thing that we need to know is the action of i y on alpha and beta. Okay. i y on alpha and beta can also be obtained in a similar way because you already know the action of plus and minus on alpha. Remember this gives you that i y is minus i by 2 i plus minus i minus. If you subtract the one equation from the other this is what you will get. Therefore, i y acting on alpha is equal to minus i by 2 i plus minus i minus acting on alpha. i plus on alpha is 0 i minus on alpha gives you beta and there is a minus and minus therefore, it is a plus i by 2 beta and i y on beta is again minus i by 2 i plus minus i minus on beta and i plus on beta gives you alpha and it gives you minus i by 2 alpha. Okay. Therefore, summarize these and immediately we can write to the matrices for these operators in no time i x on alpha is half beta, i x on beta is half alpha, i y on alpha is i by 2 beta and i y on beta is minus i by 2 alpha. Therefore, in this representation of alpha and beta what is the matrix representation for the operators i x i y. If you recall the vector algebra and the linear operator space that we did earlier, it is alpha i x alpha this is for the i x operator and then it is alpha i x beta and this is beta i x alpha and this one is beta i x beta. And you can see right away that alpha i x on beta is given by this okay. because this will give you sorry this is for i y and we have to look at this alpha i x beta is this one. So, if you write alpha i x on beta for this then you do the same thing here 1 by 2 alpha on alpha and this is 1. So, the answer is 1 by 2 this is 0 i x on alpha gives you beta therefore, alpha beta is orthogonal. So, you have 0 keeping 1 by 2 outside you have 1 1 0. Okay. This matrix sigma x as it is denoted 
zero one one zero is the famous Pauli spin matrix spin one half matrix x component ok. Likewise for i y all I need to do is to replace the operator i x with i y, i y, i y in all four places and i y on alpha gives you here you have seen that gives you beta therefore, this is 0 i y on beta gives you alpha and therefore, there is you can see that i y on beta gives you minus i by 2 times alpha therefore, this matrix i y turns out to be 1 by 2 0 minus i i 0 okay. and this is again famous poly spin matrix half matrix y component. What is the z component? That is easy because i z on alpha gives you half alpha. Therefore, this element is 1 by 2 alpha alpha and it is 1 by 2. And again alpha on i z on beta is therefore, 0 because this gives you beta back and orthogonality makes this result go to 0. And beta i z on alpha is also 0 beta i z on beta is minus 1 half. So, the matrix representation for i z is 1 by 2 0 sorry 1 by 2 1 1 0 0 minus 1. This is the sigma z 1 0 0 minus 1 is equal to sigma z the z component of the Pauli spin matrix. one half matrix. Okay. So, these are the properties of the angular momentum operators for a spin a half system. Since we know all the spatial components i x, i y, i z acting on alpha or beta the two eigenstates for the problem what they give we have complete knowledge of spin a half system with respect to the algebraic details. Now, to close this lecture you recall uh, in one of the earlier problems we were looking at sigma x sigma y plus sigma y sigma x and you can see right away that sigma x sigma y gives you 1 by 4 sorry there is no 1 by 4 this uh, sigma x is just a matrix ok. It gives you 0 1 1 0 and it gives you 0 minus i i 0 the product of which is i 0 0 and minus i and the product sigma y sigma x is 0 minus i i 0 times 0 1 1 0 and that is equal to minus i 0 0 plus i. Therefore, this is equal to minus sigma x sigma y therefore, this sum is equal to 0 and it is also easy to see therefore, that sigma x sigma y minus sigma y sigma x is going to take the difference between these two uh, operators namely i 0 0 minus i minus minus i 0 0 i. So, it gives you 2 i times 1 0 0 minus 1. So, it gives you 2 i sigma z ok. So, the Pauli spin matrices have a numerical coefficient of 2 in front of and otherwise a spin angular momentum x or y or z component. So, this is a very famous relation called the Pauli this famous statement that we have that the Pauli spin operators anti commute meaning that if you take the plus combination they go to 0 that is the negative of the commutator therefore, it is called anti commutation. And it is not just x and y or z it is cyclical 
Therefore, the similar relations that you can verify are sigma y, sigma z plus sigma z, sigma y that is 0, sigma z, sigma x plus sigma x, sigma z is 0 and sigma y, sigma z minus sigma z, sigma y is 2 i sigma x and likewise sigma z, sigma x minus sigma x, sigma z is 2 i sigma y. Okay. One last thing namely sigma square is sigma x square plus sigma y square plus sigma z square and this you know is 0 1 1 0 square plus 0 minus i i 0 square plus 1 0 0 minus 1 square. The answer is 2 times here. This will give you 1, this will give you 1. The answer is 3 times the identity matrix 2 by 2. Because this will give you 1 0 0 1, this will give you 1 0 0 1, this will also give you 1 0 0 1. So, it is 3 times the identity matrix. Therefore, sigma squared is equal to the operator 3 with the identity. So, these are angular momentum properties that we need to know for a spin half system and in the next lecture we will see the angular momentum for two such uh, electrons or two such spin half systems. How do we define them uh, when the two spins interact with each other strongly or when the two spin systems interact with each other weakly and this is extremely important in establishing what is known as the antisymmetric state for two identical uh, the spin systems of spin a half namely the electrons as an example are two protons and this will also just give you some uh, input insights into the uh, famous principle that Pauli came up with namely the principle for the antisymmetry and the principle of what is called exclusion mutual exclusion which is important in the study of atomic structure. Okay. We will do more of this with the two spins in the next lecture. Until then, thank you very much.